I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will understand combination of trigonometric functions. I have taken combination of sine and cosine function. So let us say that we have a parent function f of x equals to sine x and another function g of x equals to cosine x. As you know sine x is an odd function, right? It is an odd function and cosine x is an E1 function, right? So these are a few characteristics of these uh, functions. And when we combine these functions, what should we get? If we combine these functions, we get neither odd nor even, right? That is important to understand. Now, we will consider a function h of x in this particular video, which is combination of these two. So let me write that function as sine x plus cos x. Now, for simplicity, what I've done is, I have actually sketched this function, which is sine x plus cos x. If you see this graph, it looks like a sinusoidal function itself, uh, where the time period is still 2 pi, right? These two peaks are still 2 pi apart. So when you combine them, their time period remains same. Uh, but their amplitude has increased. Amplitude of sine x and cosine x is 1. When you combine them, it becomes slightly less than 1.5, right? So it is lesser than 1.5, but it increases, right? Another thing which you notice here is that uh, if you consider with respect to cosine x, it seems it has been shifted uh, pi by 4 to the right, right? That is what it has happened. So uh, it suggests that the combination of this function could be written as as a cosine function, right? So let me write this as r cos of, we don't know what this function is, but we'll try to find the equation of this function, x minus p, where p is the phase shift, right? So that phase shift. So it could be written like this. And now in this video, we will explore what it should be. Well, to give you a heads up, it is called wave function, right? So this is equal to a wave function. And I do have many videos on that, but I think this is a good opportunity to explain it once again. Now, to find their relation, how can we write sine x plus cos x as r times cos x minus p? Let us expand this particular function, which is r cos of x minus p, right? So where r is the amplitude, right? So we'll use the uh, combination, uh, formula, right? You remember cos A plus B formula? Let me write here. Cos of A plus B is equals to cos A cos B minus sin A sin B, right? So we'll use this formula to expand cos of X minus P. So we get cos X cos P. Since it is minus, let me write, for minus it is plus, right? So we write here plus sin x, sin p, right? Now, which I could write here as r times sin x. Let me write this in, in kind of, uh, okay, let me write cos p first. Cos p, cos x, right? Same thing. r times sin p, sin x, right? And the function on the left, we want to equate to sine x plus cos x. Let me write this as cos x plus sine x, right? Addition is commutative, so we can always change the order like this. But the important thing which I am going to show you here is that we can say cos x, cos x is common. So what is r cos p equals to? It should be the coefficient of cos x, which is 1, right? So r sine p should also be equal to one perfect so from this comparison what i get here is that r sine p is equal to one and r of cos p is also equal to one right so if i divide one by the other that means r of sine p divided by r of cos p will be equal to this of course is tan p right tan p is equals to 1 divided by 1 is 1. And when is tan p 1? Tan p is 1, 
tan inverse of 1, 45 degrees or pi by 4. So that gives us P equals to pi by 4. You get the idea, right? So we exactly calculated the phase shift and which as per my sketch is indeed pi by 4, right? So we get P as pi by 4. Now what is the value of R? To find the value of R, what we can do is we can square them and add them. So if I square and add, what do I get? I get R square sine square P plus R square cos square P, which is R square is common, sine square P plus cos square P, and that is 1. So we get this as R square. And now, so R square sine square P is R square. And what is this equal to? This is equal to 1 plus 1, right? So the left side, this is the, this is the left side. Is that okay? Left side is r square plus sine square p, but the right side is one plus one, right? So, so r square sine square p is one. R square cos square p is one. So this is one. This is one. So what we really get here is that r square is equal to r square is equals to one. So let me rewrite here. So what we get here is r square is equals to 1 plus 1, right, is 1 plus 1. So if I add r square sine square p, r square cos square p, I get 1 plus 1 on the right side, correct? So, so r square is 1 plus 1, this implies r equals to square root of 2. Do you get the idea, right? So I think there is slight confusion. Let me do this again. So this part, I'm I'm doing it again here, okay? So what we did was, we do r square sine square p is equals to 1 square, right? r square cos square p is also equals to 1 square, or 1, right? So when we add them up, both of them, then what do we get? This is what I'm saying. So 1 plus 1 is 2, right? And r square sine square p plus r square sine square p is r square, correct? So that is how we get r equals to square root of 2. Do you get the idea? So this point here has an amplitude of square root of 2, right? So this is minus square root of 2, correct? So from all these calculations, what we can conclude here is that a simple parent functions when combined together, as we did here, results into r cos x minus p and that is in this particular case equals to square root let me write squeeze it in here okay let me push it here square root of 2 cos of x minus pi by 4 do you see that that is how it is related correct so what really happens is when you combine sine x and cosine x then you always get a function which is sinusoidal whose amplitude changes and in general the formula is that amplitude r becomes square root of let us say these coefficients were if we do general right so let me change it to a general function okay so let me push the page a bit so if i say h of x is equal to okay h of x is equals to a times, let me write cos first this time, cos of x plus b times sine of x, right? In that case, r will be equals to square root of a square plus b square. You get the idea? And in that case, p, the phase shift, will be equals to tan inverse of minus b by a. So that is what you you will get, right? So that is how we can actually find find a relation between these functions, correct? So so now you know that when you combine a cosine with a sine function, you do get a sinusoidal function whose amplitude changes and we can always find the amplitude using this formula and whose there's a phase shift and we can also find the phase shift 
using uh, the formula given to us, right? But in general, you can adopt the method which I use. Just those three, four lines will get you the result, perfect result. So always rely on these steps which I did rather than the formula. And we call this as a wave function. So it is a very important thing to know and uh, it will always help you in your test. I hope you learn a lot from here. I'm Anil Kumar. You can subscribe to my videos and learn a lot. Thank you and all the best.